Hi everyone! Today's project is going to be working on our windlass. Now the shaft on the windlass is bent, but also I think there's several other things that just aren't right about this windlass. Also, one other big thing is that the port engine has to be running in order to even operate the windlass. And that was a problem when we were coming back from Key West because the port engine went out. And when we got pulled in and we went to anchor just south of Miami, what are you gonna do? I mean, I go, you had no port engine, it was out. So how do you operate the windlass? Well, it has a mechanical release on it, but that was messed up as well. So the whole thing was just quite the kerfuffle. But let's start in the engine bay. I want to show you how to bypass the relay that requires that engine to be running in order to operate the windlass. So let's go back to the engine bay and I'll show you what's up with that. I'm down in the port engine bay here. So the windlass control is behind this box. So we'll go ahead and open this guy up. There's little quarter turns. We're gonna need a jumper cable here in order to do this. Now I want to permanently install a switch on this so I can just do it at will. But for now, I don't have the switch. So for now, I'm gonna show you how to hotwire it. So in an emergency, you can hotwire this thing and actually deploy your anchor or, or use your windlass without the engine running. What we're actually going to do is we're gonna hotwire this relay right here power. So there's a coil across here on a relay and one side's hooked to ground. The other side is hooked to the engine actually. So when the engine is on, it powers this relay. Once the relay's on, then the windlass will operate. So what we're going to do is we're going to bypass the little wire that goes to the engine, give it power from this block up here, which is 12 volts, and we'll go ahead and hardwire our relay. And you're probably wondering, well, how do you know which side to hook it to? As you're futzing around in here, remember this is hot. So be careful of that and keep that in mind. I'm going to pull this little relay out so you can get a better idea what it looks like. This is the guy we need to work with. And on the relay, relay itself is a little diagram here that tells you these 85 and 86 are across the coil. That's what we want. But the question is, which side do you hook it to? Let's go ahead and hook our meter up to ground and we'll, we'll see if we've got a dead short on which side. So we'll check both this side and that side because we know this is off right now or the windlass would be working. So we're fine. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook this to the negative terminal on the battery. Now, just to make sure that we're hooked up properly, I will set my, my meter here and we'll test this hole right here. And there we go, 13 volt. Okay, so we this is definitely good. We've got 12, we've got 13 volts there, so we're good. I'm gonna go back to the diode setting here, or actually the short circuit setting on here, which will actually buzz. It'll give me a little buzz. It sounds like this, if I've got a dead short. So that's what we're looking for. We want we want to know which side of this thing is the ground. So let's hook it to this side and see what we get. And sure enough, we've got a dead short. What about the other side? We don't hear anything at all. Okay, that makes sense then, right? Okay, that's good. So now we know which side we need to hook this guy too. So we can pull our terminal down a little bit so we can connect to it here. All right, like that. And then we can just quickly test it. Do you hear a little click? Click, click, click. So that's the relay clicking over. We'll leave this as it is. Let's go back to the windlass and I'll show you that it does now back run. Back at the chain locker here. I have the anchor chain off the gypsy. So it's, it's just going to spin. You can see there's nothing on the gypsy there. You see that wobble? Yeah. That's what we're trying to fix today. Somebody has bent the shaft on this thing. They just ruined it. Yeah, it's not good. So that's our issue for today. We're gonna to pull this windlass apart. I have a brand new shaft for it. We'll go ahead and get that installed. There's some other things that are wrong with this thing though. I'll show you those as we get it apart. But let's go back into the engine bay and turn the windlass off. So let's disconnect our little jumper because I don't want power to this thing right now. First of all, let's verify that we have no power. There's the up, there's the down, no power. That's great. Now per the instructions from Quick. You take a, a normal uh, winch handle, put it in the top here, and loosen this guy up. And it's important we get that all the way out. We have to pull this. It's, it's actually kind of a big plug up here. All right, and pretty big and heavy piece, and that's what it looks like inside. And there's a rubber O-ring at the top to keep water out. And with that, this, this top capstan will actually come off pretty easily. And that's it right there. So we'll go ahead and put this out of the way. In addition, we have a very large, flat, washer here that's been keyed. 
for the shaft. Now, as for the gypsy, this is very confusing to me. You just see these locks here. Those locks, I'm not sure if this thing is in right side up or upside down. So down here is the actual mechanism to release the gypsy. And at least according to Quick's instructions, that was just not working. I pulled this pin out a little bit because it was all frozen in there, but normally this pin is all the way down and this guy can kind of move back and forth a little bit, but I don't think it's really gonna do much. It seems there's nothing down here at the bottom of this to catch anything at all. And it made me wonder if possibly this is in upside down. Had a good friend of ours, Paul, over take a look at this as well. And he said, you know, I think your gypsy's in upside down. So why would the gypsy be in upside down? My only guess is, and Paul was saying that he thought that maybe it was starting, the chain was starting to jump on the gypsy and maybe the gypsy was worn. So they took it out, turned it upside down and put it back on again. If those cogs are indeed to help release this thing, then they've defeated the manual override on the windlass. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to go through the exploded view of this. Quick has a good exploded view of all the parts involved and see if it's actually upside down or not. And I'll check that out in a minute. Before it gets pulled out, actually, there are two bolts here. They're cat bolts. Oh, things heavy. So that's it right there. It just, it goes around the center of the gypsy and keeps it, keeps it from, I don't know, moving out of the way. And I've also lo loosened this up as well, carefully. So I wanted to see what's going on here besides it's crazy dirty. And there's a, obviously a little spring there you can see. Come on. There it goes, okay. This is the actual manual release. You're supposed to slide this back and it allows it to move. The whole mechanism is just, really badly corroded so I'm going to clean it all up so that it moves properly and re-grease everything but yeah not looking so great and look at all this corrosion here now right now you're thinking uh Franny yes so the chain kind of goes through the center of the windlass here doesn't it yes it does I can't get the chain off the end of the anchor there's no nut on this side this is rounded on the back side of this it is flat but I think it was supposed to get up against the edge here and hold it so you could do this with one wrench, and this is a 21 millimeter nut on the other side, but every time I turn it, it just spins this guy here. Even though I can't get the chain out and completely through this hole, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I'm going to release the bottom of the windlass. There's bolts that are holding this all together, and I'm hoping I can just sort of pull this plate up, flop it over, and get it out of the way, and then we can start working on this shaft. So this is the top we've been working on. And underneath here, we've got four bolts, it looks like, that's holding this thing on. And I was thinking that the back side of this was actually hooked to something, but it's not. Boy, this whole unit is cantilevered off of those four mounts. Yikers. This little wire here that's not hooked up, I believe, not positive, but I'm pretty certain this little guy is for a chain counter. And interestingly, on our bundle here, we have two wires coming through here. I don't know what they're for. Kind of wondering if they were connected to the chain counter and then at some point something got stuck or got pulled or whatever and just yanked these little wires out. So, you know, good possibility, I think. Let me get something on those and see if I can get these nuts off and pull this guy out. All right, we're pretty much to the end of the throw there. I'm gonna leave that nut on just to catch this thing. I don't want it falling. So that'll help catch it. I'm gonna do the same for the others here. So let's go ahead and loosen these guys up. And that's that one and it's washer. Now, with all those guys loose, in theory, this should come down. Guess not. Huh. Let me get my plastic hammer and see if we can't give it a little plastic hammer love. And I'm gonna tap on the shaft from the top and see if we get any movement at all. Nope, I guess not, huh? I'm gonna try hitting it a little bit from the bottom and see if I can push the shaft up a little bit. Maybe I can get this whole housing to pop up a little bit. But I did verify one thing, the gypsy is in, or was in, upside down. So that's why our lock didn't work. Let me go ahead and pound on this thing a little bit and see if I make any progress. I think I am making some progress. It looks like there's a little bit of a, I've got a little distance here. Yep, I can see the shaft going up. In fact, now we are sitting on the nuts, so that's why I left those in there. I just didn't want everything come crashing down. So at this point, it isn't so tight. Yeah, let me take those nuts off the last little bit. We'll just have to be a lot more careful. All right, one nut and one washer. Okay, now we have to be careful because we don't have anything holding this on. There it goes, down off the shaft. 
Okay, there we go. So there it is, sports fans. This has to come down straight. And now I bet you this whole thing can go up. We've got a rubber gasket here. Oh, look at that. There's a couple of washers here too. So there one, yep. We'll pull this rubber guy off. There it goes. Okay. Wow, look at that. So I don't know if you can see the bend, but there's the high side, there's the low side. It looks like it's bent right about here too, which means the bearings took the brunt of this bend. Well, I still need to get the shaft out of this thing, huh? So there's a grease seal here that I can push out and there's a ball bearing underneath it. And I'm wondering if the entire shaft can just come out this way. Because on the back side of it, the bearings and everything are actually an assembly on the shaft and then the shaft goes in and the seal goes in on top of it. That's my guess. Wow, look at this keyway. Just demo destructo. Somebody just, wow, they destroyed this shaft. How did, they must have twisted it as well. The shaft must be bent and twisted. Let me take a look at the exploded diagram again. Now this confirms that our gypsy was in upside down, so that's not good. So we have a sir clip there and a second sir clip there. So let's see, where is the seal? All I pulled out of the top is this guy, which is that big washer right there. So down below it, that I bet is the seal, I think. This is just a grease seal here at the top. So I pulled it out. I have a really nice set of Work Pro circlet pliers. These are big too. They're beefy. Look at these guys. Straight ones would be the best, the easier ones to use. That one's seated and that one is seated. All right, there we go. Okay. That's the first circ clip out, so that's good. I can see the bearing moving a little bit in here. Maybe just a pop or two of the hammer. Oh, there we go. There it is. All right, there's our bent shaft. And we can push out our seal. That's the last thing here. What's in here? We have a new one of these seals as well. It's important to note though, which way the seal is actually sitting in here. This is the slot in the seal here. In other words, you want the outside facing bit of it down here on the outside this way so you want to make sure you put it in the right way there it goes and that's our old seal because we have brand new on these as well you should always replace these anyways they just wear out over time look at this corrosion in this pitting here it's really bad i mean it's not a structural issue the part's still plenty strong enough but wow it's chewed away a lot of material and it's because this rubber gasket here is just not doing its thing anymore and this metal ended up contacting this top plate which is just galvanized steel and this is probably aluminum this housing yeah it doesn't weigh anything so it's probably aluminum doubt it sink that's the problem very reactive metal on a lesser reactive metal and we get all sorts of bad things happening it turns into a battery is basically what it does so i have some stuff for that at this point let me go ahead and just clean all of this I'll do my best to sort of clean it up and get as much of that corrosion off as i can i'm not going to bore you with that it's just kind of simple sort of scrape 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 cleany bit we'll get back to it when we reassemble the shaft this is the full replacement shaft from quick it took three months for this to arrive it is a full kit. It does have both grease sails, all four circlips, and a brand new bearing. Our first step is gonna to be to pack the bearing. So this is an open bearing, very similar to an old school car wheel bearing. I'm gonna pack the grease in it. Now what you don't wanna do is just smear grease on it. You literally have to pack these. So put a big dollop of grease in your palm and just pound away until the grease goes completely through the bearing. It's a little time consuming, but it ensures that the bearing is completely lubricated. The bearing is captured on the shaft with those two smaller circlips. So install the first one, then slide your bearing on, and then install the second circlip. Don't forget to add a little extra grease to the shaft to resist corrosion. I'm back at it the next morning. I've got my parts laid out here. This is just the polishing and cleaning I did from yesterday. These are our new seals here and two new circlips, I think they're called. All right, our new shaft is over here. Let's have it covered up. It's got grease all over it. So it's got the bearing installed with the clips on each side. So it's ready to go in. And the anchor locker, I worked on this thing a bit, but you can see it's still fairly corroded here. I mean, there's a lot of erosion here, all the way through here. And look at how pitted this is here. It's really bad. And the gasket has kind of seen better days. So I've been trying to think of what to do about that. So I think what I'm gonna do 
is use some of this stuff, which is high temperature gasket material. It goes like um, for carburetor mounting and that sort of thing. This is always a great thing to have on hand anyways, but this thing here is just had it and you can see that it's just trashed over here. It's just completely gone. I'm gonna cut out a new gasket. And in addition, I have some tough gel here. Now this is for eliminating corrosion and things because this plate here, you can see all the rust on it. This is just galvanized steel. And I'm going to have to deal with this before too awfully long. I mean, it's starting to rust here and here and all this. I don't have time for that for this project right now. I have my gasket cut out. There it is. It's a little rough, but I think it'll do. I'm debating whether I should take the old gasket out. I don't think so, actually. I mean, it's, it's just another layer of protection, so why remove it? I think what I'm going to do is going to use my tough gel here and I'm going to go around these edges here. There's no sense in putting it here, but I will go around the outside of all of this all the way around with that stuff and glop it on pretty good. So I've never used this tough gel before. It's pretty sticky stuff. I think it's kind of like a never sees is really what it is, but it feels like it goes on like silicone. That's kind of a weird feeling. It's very thick. Now, what I'm going to do is carefully lift this piece back on. Put the wire down through the hole here. In it should go. In and down. Awesome. Okay, that's killer. I did leave my gasket a little bit wider around the edges here. It's because it's so chewed up over here, I thought it might be a good idea. Our next step is going to be to insert our seal. Now, I have to remember that this seal actually goes in what looks like is kind of upside down. It goes in like this, not like that. So around this bottom here, our seal is going to go in like that. I'm a big fan of silicone paste. I use it on a lot of different things. And I'm just gonna apply some around the outside here just to help this thing go in a little bit easier. There's no way this thing is going anywhere once it's in, so I'm not worried about that. So there we are, we've got the seal, so let's see, see if we can push it down without destroying it. That's gonna be the trick. Yeah, it went in. Good. Okay, that's great. Oh, I knocked my spring off. That's okay. It goes right back on. Spring back on. But look at that. It's completely seated all the way around. Next is going to be our shaft. Now, it goes in with this end, this long end with the key down. That's fine, but it'll destroy that seal, so I need to get this key off. It'll come off. It's I had it off a little bit ago, so let me just pop this, this key out, and we can just slide our shaft in. Now the ceiling surface is actually this thicker bit that's up here by the top and it has some grease on it as well. So drop that in there till, all right, sit this down. There we go. All right, we are in. Look at that, huh? That looks really good. Our next step is going to be to install this big circlet that holds this whole shaft in. Well, wow, it feels nice too. It feels really good. Close that guy up a bit. In. Okay, there we go. Yep, I can see the circlips in all the way around. That's great. Next, I'm going to pack in a bit more grease in here, and then our seal's going to go on top of that. I'm just going to put a bit of grease in here. It'll all squish through with the seal when we put it on. Now we're going to put our second seal in, the top seal, and obviously it doesn't go in upside down. It goes in right side up. Carefully slip it over this, and there's already quite a bit of grease here, so this should slide in. Well, I've got the seal all the way down. It's now flush. It's actually just below the surface here a little bit. With the shaft in, the next step is gonna to be to put the motor in from underneath. We have to remember our keyway. Gotta put our keyway in. And there's also this big rubber grommet, I guess, or a big, I don't know what this guy is. This guy has to go in there as well from underneath. And then we just need to lift the motor up and put the bolts, the nuts back on the studs and tighten the whole thing up. With the motor assembly firmly attached from below, I think we're all set down there. Next, we're gonna start building out the top. We've got a couple of things to do. One thing I don't wanna forget is this little guy, which is the lock mechanism for it. So if I don't forget to put this thing in, that'd be kind of a bummer, but it was super, super corroded before, so I cleaned it really, really well, and I'm gonna install it with some of that tough gel stuff because hopefully it'll be usable when I go to use it because it was so corroded I could not even activate this thing at all. It was just completely locked. So let's go ahead and get this guy installed.
but there is a way to use the windlass without any electrical power at all. And I think I know why this one looks the way it does. So the Gypsy, this piece here, and this piece are two different pieces. This is the top of the cone clutch, and this is, of course, the Gypsy. And so this is pressed into here when you crank on that capson on the top, and it locks this, this piece to this piece. I think in our instance, I think this piece and this these two are just corroded together. So I have to break this loose from the top and there's another one at the bottom. So these are called cone clutches. So let's pull this whole thing off, take the gypsy off and see if we can bang those cone clutches out of there. Looking at the bottom of the gypsy, it's a little easier to tell. This is definitely a different material. So it's a different piece. We need to bang these things out. I'm gonna get a screwdriver and put it down on that slot down there. Whack it a few times with a plastic hammer and see if we can pop it out. Boom, and there it is. Look at that, that is the cone clutch. We've gotta clean this up in here and lubricate this because this should be able to spin when you take the pressure off the gypsy and should lock down when, it, when it's done. But this has to be cleaned, so that's that one. I'm gonna do the one on the other side. Here we go. Boom, there it goes. Fabtabulous, there we go. And see, there was grease on this. I mean, somebody put grease on it at one point, but it just, it seized up. Got the parts all cleaned and I used a bit of tough gel here on them as well because we had diff dissimilar metals. So here's the other one. It's just, there we go. So, so there we go. So I've got a bunch of that stuff on there. I, it's probably going to make it a little difficult for the clutch to catch. I'm a little worried about that actually, but I guess we'll see. So there's the big washer that goes on the bottom and there is our clutch going down. The gypsy, you want to make sure that the notches are down as they are. Spin this guy around, get that out of the way, and then realign the clutch and set that in. And we can go ahead and lock this guy down. And that's it. Now look at this. See? Look at the gypsy moving. Isn't that something? Yeah. See, that is what we didn't have because the clutches were bonded to the gypsy they were just corrosion welded on i'm going to reassemble this it's not a big deal it's just like what we did before i'm just going to throw the capson back on and, and put our two screws in on this little tongue that's over here and that's it got it jumpered let's see how we do here we go look at that much less bent you know the only thing is there probably needs a little lubrication here for this guy Yeah, that sounds better. All right. Okay, well, I'm going to call that good. We can pull up a little bit of chain here. Wrap it around the gypsy. There we go. Now we're locked in. Well, that's pretty much it for the windless rebuild, except, well, hopefully this thing will give me less hassle in the future. Join us next time when Franny implements a critical upgrade to allow the windlass to be operated without the engine running, and she goes over how to operate the windlass with no power at all. With the motor assembly bolted in from below, now we can start building out the top. The first thing I want to do, and not forget, is the lock. This little... Oh, shit.